What's up guys, welcome to a Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be putting Forge 1.12.2 on our Minecraft 1.12.2. Now one of the first things you want to do when you're doing something like this is to make sure that your Java is up to date. So the first thing I'm going to do is click open and type Java in my search bar. Then we're going to check for updates. We're going to let it do its thing and see if it's got any updates for us. Now most of the time, your Java will automatically be set to check for updates at a certain day and a certain time, automatically. Um, if you're not sure, just go ahead and click update now. Mine's already up to date. I already did a take of this video, so um, sort of like a test run. So therefore, I don't need to update mine, but if you need to update yours, it takes a moment. You'll click, you know, okay, install, etc., and then you're okay to install. So once you've done that, go on minecraftforge.net and you want to find your way to this you can also google it what you can do is type in minecraft forge and then your version number which in our case is 1.12.2 press enter or search button if you'd like and then here we are at minecraft forge skip over the ads uh just 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 you know in general so you see the minecraft forge page will open it up and it puts us right here um, and as you can see on the sidebar, we've got all of our versions. We've got 1.14, 1.13, 1.11, as far back as 1.1. Uh, so what you're going to do is click Windows Installer. Um, it's going to ask you, are you sure? Your uh, computer might warn you that it's a virus or, or it may be harmful to your computer. It's not. It's perfectly safe. So when your computer gives you that warning, if it does, just click like Keep or It's Fine, stuff like that. So once you've got that downloaded, boom, here's our Forge Installer. Um, there's a little verification of Minecraft, you got to make sure that you've got your, um, you know, you want to say, make sure that you've got your Minecraft signed in and all downloaded. I just deleted the folder to clear it up, so I will be right back. I'm going to log into my account and I'm going to reinstall Minecraft. Right, so I thought while I'm already here, I might show you just how you install Minecraft if you don't know how to. I mean, we're here, might as well make it so. Um, here's fun. You can uh, actually download older versions of Minecraft, like your Minecraft betas. They are also uh, all still available. And then you get your stable versions, which are the current ones. So uh, we're going to go down here to this drop down, and we are going to select 1.12.2. And we're going to install this. Um, Could have named it. I didn't want to. So the number one thing to recognize here is that I don't think actually installing a vanilla 1.12.2 is entirely necessary. However, I'm doing it anyways just to make sure I've got all the files in there, all my ducks in a row. I, I, I personally do not know if Minecraft Forge uh, installs all the files you need for you. Therefore, I'm going to assume it doesn't, so I'm going to install my game separately. Alright, so here we are, vanilla Minecraft interface. We've got no mods, no options, no pop-ups, no anything. We've just got our language settings. Um, that is what this is, isn't it? I remember playing with this. There was the uh, pirate language. Let me just check on this. What was it called? Swashbuckler? Wait, what? Kingdom of Cats. Oh, that's good. Lituv Lituva? Latvia? Out. Teroa Terio Maori Limburg What you are speak then Forge Unicat font no nah. That's cute um I got a little sidetracked now didn't I um now there's the pirate speak the seven seas are Okay, um... Change it back real quick. A little bit of a diversion. Ah, United Kingdom English. Like upside down, it's fun. Alright, uh... Right, so, uh... We're gonna close Minecraft. So my Minecraft is all installed and everything is working well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Forge 1.12.2 installer, like this. So 
Welcome to Simple Forge Installer. It's going to find your Minecraft directory and it's going to ask install client or install server. We're not making a server today. I may do a, f a future video on that, but not today. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and install the client. It might take a moment uh, once it's all installed. Um, we'll do the next step. So here at the end, it'll say successfully installed client profile forge, blah, blah, blah. Grabbed 15 required libraries. Just means it got whatever it needed to make it work. So now we're going to open up Minecraft again. Boom, here we are. It's already preloaded it for us here in Forge 1.12.2 Forge. But let's say you want to make a new profile. It's just as simple as clicking new, going to version, and you'll have to scroll all the way down and select your Forge version. You can name it if you want to. You can change the directory, the resolution, the arguments. Now, especially if you're using a high volume of mods, you're going to want to set this to 4 gigabytes all the way up to even six gigabytes or even eight gigabytes if you have that and you can spare it on some of your more higher end mods or if you want to use shaders uh two gigabytes is going to be fine just for now because we're not going to be really doing anything crazy actually i'll put it to four just because of some future tutorials i plan to make and reviews and stuff so we'll click create and it will make our unnamed installation right here uh, i can probably delete this one um so but this is that both are going to work so we've got our Minecraft Forge uh, installed now. Let me rename this to uh, Forge. So, go ahead and click play. It's going to go ahead and prepare it. It's going to show us the loading screen, uh, which is this cute little anvil getting hit and hit and getting hit by a hammer. And it will load. Uh, keep in mind. Um, Forge and Forge mods and stuff like that will take a bit longer to um, to load. Uh, Forge Forge itself on its own won't take too much time because it doesn't have much to construct. But the more mods you add, obviously, the longer the uh, startup is going to take. Unless you use an SSD, a solid state drive. That's some computer tech. If you don't know what a solid state drive is, Google it. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. All right, so here we are, boom. We've got our mods folder now. We don't have any mods right now, so. That's the last step I'm gonna show you. Way back in the day, you used to have to find something called the meta inf and delete it and do all these kinds of like, you know, file, who's he what's it. I was uh, a bit dumber. I didn't know how to do anything like that. But anyways, what we're going to do this time, is we're gonna press Windows R at the same time. And in this search bar, we're going to type percent app data percent and honestly if you've never done this before i'm amazed because anybody that plays minecraft has most likely gone to the app data folder keep in mind this folder is also reachable through a physical um sort of access file file pass what are you going to call it so you would go to local disk you would go to users your username and then app data. Now the reason why it's grayed out like this is because it's actually a hidden folder so you would have to go to your properties and you would have to change it so that it lets you see hidden icons. Where is that setting? <laughs> I was gonna show you how to do it but it's usually the first thing I do I'm gonna get a new computer, and this computer's five years old, so. Well, I'll probably cover that in a future video if anyone asks any questions, but showing hidden folders is definitely something that you should have set at all times because then it lets you see this, but you can also just do percent app data percent. So we're going to app data, roaming, Minecraft. Here's our .minecraft folder, here's our mods folder. If you do not have a mods folder, in your .minecraft folder, click new folder, type in mods, no capitals, all lowercase, all baby numbers, okay? And then here we are, we're going to open up mods. This is where we're going to stick anything that we want to put in our game. Now just for starters, just for this first tutorial, I'm going to use just enough items. It's a very small, light UI mod, very, very useful for learning recipes and uh, what items are used for, what they go into, how you get them things like that so that is going to download it's already been done actually it's only about 
600 kilobytes. Yes, okay. So boom, there's our JEI. Just get you a little file right here on the desktop. We're gonna click it and drag it into our mods folder. Now your other option is to click it, control C, click control V. You can also right click, cut, right click, paste, or right click, copy, right click, paste. Either way, do whatever you want to get that mod into the mods folder. Now that it's in the mods folder, we can minimize our window or close it, it's up to you. I usually add more after that. And then we will launch Forge. Now you'll see, it is a very small mod, but our Forge will load just that little bit longer because it's gonna have to construct JEI, put all of its ducks in a row, so to speak. So basically we're gonna watch it try and call on the classes and arguments that JEI is making so that it runs properly in our game and actually is useful. So that is what the loading is doing. That is why it's important. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we are fully launched. Go into our mods folder. We can see we have just enough items installed. From the menu, we can actually configure it. Typically, I would go to search options and change um, mod name to enabled and tooltip to require prefix. So I can click this and it'll, I can search a mod's name, say uh, Railcraft. It'll show me anything I can build from Railcraft. Just an example. So let's go ahead and create a world. Right, and boom, here we are, all nice and loaded in. It's gonna give us tutorials because I forgot to disable them. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to do that later. It's quite easy. I do a little bit of lag. All right, so now for the moment of truth. Did we properly install JEI? Yes, yes we did. So here you can click R to see how to make something and U to see what it can be used for. Um, there are a bunch of other um, additional functions in JEI, but those are the most important ones right there. And then you've also got um, this is this, the toolbars, bookmarks. Right. So let's go here. We can actually bookmark the ingredients we need. So when we open this up, boom, we can see what we were looking at. We can also press A to debookmark them. Like I said, it's full of utility and useful things that you can use it for. It's also got all kinds of, uh, here we are, in <laughs> the config. So, cheat mode on, and you can just click and drag whatever you want into your inventory and, you know, go ahead and place them down. You can shift click for a stack, a little wool party, etc. It's, uh, it's a very useful mod. And honestly, if you plan on making a modded playthrough of any kind, I highly recommend you get JEI. Uh, it's, it's almost un... Without JEI, the game just isn't the same. And a modded playthrough is going to be that much more difficult without JEI. 